Amen. Well, friends, good morning. Grace and peace to you in the name of the risen Christ. It is a blessing to see you all here. I'll get out of the candle lighter's way. It's all good. Um, my name is Reverend Jeff Prothro, and I want to make a special welcome to any visiting guests who are joining us this morning, and a special welcome to everyone who is joining us online. This is a time of worship and grace, and I hope we can all experience the movement of the Spirit in our lives and in our hearts together. You're invited to take a few moments, look at the back of the bulletin. We have a few announcements listed there, and I want to draw your attention to one announcement. It's the middle announcement. As you exit into our welcome area and underneath our um, screen, you'll see a big board that has a bunch of envelopes like this. Now you're invited to take an envelope. Each envelope has a number. A lot of them have been decorated. We have many talented um, young folk here who have decorated these envelopes. And these represent a dollar amount. And you're invited to consider giving to um, our youth group to fund their mission trip. There are 144 envelopes. So if you do the math really quick in your head, which I cannot do, but if you do it, um, the mission trip would be fully funded for both this year and a good portion of it funded for next year. That meant if we took all these envelopes. Now, Let's say you want to give this amount, but you don't find the envelope that you're looking for. Let's say it's $20, but you don't see the 20 envelope. You could take the $9 envelope, $11 envelope, combine the two, and like magic, that equals $20. Or someone suggested, well, what if we just multiply? I will never say no to multiplication when it comes to this. But friends, this is a fun way for us to demonstrate our support for our youth group, for the mission trip, which is always impactful. So I just invite you to consider giving. You can just take the envelopes that are just right around the corner, right over here. And as you take an envelope, a bigger message is going to appear behind on, on the board. So I look forward to seeing that board emptied here pretty soon. Well, friends, today we continue our Easter celebration. We are in the season of Easter. We recognize the goodness of God's love, that God's promises fulfilled at the empty tomb. And so we're just called to praise God. And that's what we will be focusing on this morning. Psalm 150, over a dozen times says, hey, y'all, praise God and use your instruments, do all of that. And so today is a special day in worship as we get to hear any number of instruments lifting up their praise and thanksgiving to God. You are all instruments of God's peace, so I look forward to hearing you sing today. And then halfway through the sermon, we have a special uh, duet that will be offered in response to God's grace in our lives and in our hearts. And so I really look forward to what is about to happen in worship. So friends, today is a beautiful day. It is a beautiful time for worship. We are here as Easter people ready to celebrate God's love. So you are invited to stand as you are able, and Reverend Kim will lead us in the call to worship together. Praise God who has raised Jesus Christ to reveal new life. Praise God who sends the Spirit to empower the church. Praise God with trumpet sound. Praise God with flute and harp. Praise God with tambourine and dance. Praise God with the strings and pipes. Let everything that breathes sing praises. Let's sing together our opening hymn, the Sing of the Lord's Goodness. Sing of the Lord's goodness, Father of all wisdom, come to him and bless his name. Mercy he has shown us.
Amen. Friends, let's welcome one another this morning. So Martin Luther said, Next to the word of God, the noble art of music is the greatest treasure in the world. This precious gift has been given to us that we might thereby remind ourselves that God has created us for the express purpose of praising and extolling God. Today we are going to be focused on the song we sing together with God. So friends, let us center upon the grace of God who makes us sing and dance as we now pray the centering prayer with one voice. You will find the words in your bulletin or on the screen. Holy God, you are the source of life. Gather us now together, we pray. Form us into a holy community of your own people. Help us to sing and hear the song of your beautiful creation. Mold us by the breath of your Holy Spirit. Free us to accept the new life Christ offers us through your presence among us. Amen. Let us continue now to pray in silence. Creator God, in praise and adoration, our spirits dance before you today. You have created this wondrous universe and all the magnificent things within it. You have blessed us with so much throughout our lives, even to this day of praise and thanksgiving. Let our spirits soar, let our hearts sing boldly of your wondrous love. We celebrate your love and presence with us. We pray in the name of our Savior Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I invite the children to come forward for our children's time. Come sit, come sit, come sit. Hold your mouth. Come sit. 
Welcome, everybody. I'm so glad you guys are here. So you know what? Today we're going to start with our scripture. And I want you to listen carefully about what the scripture is telling you to do, okay? Thanks. Here we go. Let's listen. Yes, let me read from Psalm chapter 150, verses 1 to 6. Praise the Lord. Praise God in God's sanctuary. Praise God in God's mighty firmament. firmament. Praise God for God's mighty deeds. Praise God according to God's surpassing greatness. Praise God with a trumpet sound. Praise God with lute and harp. Praise God with tambourine and dance. Praise God with the strings and pipe. Praise God with clanging cymbals. Praise God with loud clashing cymbals. Let everything that breathes praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Now, did you guys catch what that was telling us to do? No. No? Praise the Lord. Good job. And it said, praise God with tambourine and cymbals and a trumpet and a harp. And guys, I don't have any of that. I, hmm. What do you think we could use to praise God with if I don't have any instruments? Are you singing? Am I singing? I don't sing very good, though, so I'm not going to sing. Oh. I'm not going to sing, though. Oh! Dancing, we could dance. It said to sing with dance. Yeah, we're, man, that's not our symbols though. So I wonder, do you think maybe we can make music on our bodies? Oh, I hear something behind us back there. Oh, look at that. The choir's got it figured out, right? Maybe we can clap our hands. Can somebody clap their hands? All right, somebody else? You keep clapping. Keep clapping. You keep clapping. You keep clapping. You two keep clapping. You yep, stomp your feet. Ah, right, here's. Yeah, all right. So we can praise. You can't do that? No. Can we snap our fingers? Oh, yeah, I, can. I can't. I can do it silent. You can do it silent? Yeah. You can do that? Yeah, so who's making that noise? Where's that coming from? It's like a bird or something. <laughs> yeah, tweet, 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 tweet. Right? Because sometimes we're... Oh, sh 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 okay, okay, okay. Great job. Great job. So sometimes, right, if we're walking around outside, maybe we can listen for the different sounds that are made. And that's all of creation praising God. What? The birds singing, maybe the wind rustling in the leaves. Yeah. So you know all those sounds, and we can make all those sounds with our bodies. And sometimes, right, maybe when we're here, maybe when we learn a song that we know really well, we can use our voices, and maybe some of you play some instruments and you can use those, or one day you'll learn to play an instrument and you can use that. Maybe one day you'll be sitting in a church behind a piano playing a song or up on stage playing your instruments and using that as a way to worship God. You know what you get to do today right now? We get to go upstairs and we're going to learn a couple of songs and one of them is actually about praising God. All right? So Miss Alicia's back there and Miss Clara. Wave your hand, Clara. We're going to follow them upstairs to Children's Church, okay?
Thank you, Bell Choir. Friends, will you pray with me and for me? Holy God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be a faithful response to the Spirit moving among us in all of our sacred spaces. In your Son's name we pray. Amen. Well, it really is pretty early in the morning when I hear the first strains of birds waking me up and letting each other know outside that, hey, dawn is near. It's like these birds are talking to say, guess what? The sun is about to rise. We need to help it rise. Now, in our house, when it's comfortable outside, we try to leave our window cracked through the night. And the first notations of a new day sometimes, and I say sometimes, eases us out of our slumber. Now, there are other times when our cat doesn't ease us out of our slumber and says, hey, feed me now. But, um, you know, the birds, though, offer just a nice melody to get the morning started. And that melody slowly builds. Think about in the morning in your places, if you have that opportunity to hear, maybe it just starts off with one or two notes, and then you can hear another bird and another bird. And what um, happens is just this wonderful sound that morning breaks. And so I want us to take a few moments to listen. The other morning, I got out of bed and decided to record what we hear as the first notes of the morning. So let's pause and give it a listen. Now there are some mornings when I really enjoy the sounds as a prelude to the day ahead. It's like, oh, how beautiful. I feel refreshed. I'm ready to go out with the birds. Now other mornings, to be honest, I let out kind of a deep sigh and wish the birds would lower the volume. I say, why are you so darn loud? Now, I could go and close the window, but that would require me to actually get out of bed to do it. So it's easier for me to just to kind of complain. But I think we've been there in those moments where it's like, I don't want to hear that noise. Some morning, it's a beautiful symphony. Other mornings, it is just a loud honking right there. But by the time that we are up and at them and the kids are off to school, much of the bird song has been replaced by the sounds of cars on highways, construction work. If it's the weekend, we may start hearing a lawnmower or two. I always wonder what is the designated time for lawnmowers to start? You know, I have my rules. No one else seems to follow them, though. And this can all kind of create distortion this distortion, but it is still part of the soundtrack of the day, leading eventually, it moves from morning, you know, you get out on the highway and all you hear are cars, maybe you get to your place of work and you just hear more um, sounds in the afternoon, and then it kind of crescendos by the evening, and then evening song takes over, and through the night, it'll cycle back again to those first notes of the morning birds talking and singing with one another. It's the daily rhythm. It's a flow that are continually present. And most of the time, I recognize it as creation really praising God. And so each day, we move ahead in the midst of that praise, note by note, beat by beat, Sound by sound. Now our psalmist this morning says, you know what? Let everything that breathes praise God. God, our creator, our redeemer, our sustainer. Now this psalm, Psalm 150, comes at the end of the hymn book for the people of God. 
It is a song of praise, and it's also a doxology, a last burst of joy directed toward God. Despite everything that has come before, it's a comforting reminder that God truly is with us, and we need to praise God. But I do have to ask myself sometimes, is it really like that in the world that seems so discordant? Can we always be in this attitude of praise and thanksgiving that the psalm calls for? Knowing that sometimes it seems like we're just listening to a broken record and the scratchy noises with the sound of gunfire replacing trumpets. Screaming voices shouting down the tempered tones. How can we compose a symphony that celebrates the goodness of God's love when so many of us, for instance, are bent on erasing the humanity of others? Where do we experience the joy of God's creation in that? Now with this psalm, over a dozen times, in six short verses, we are called to praise God. We are called to practice praise with the instruments we have. Practice that requires a lifetime of learning and doing and growing. Without the practice needed, the praise can't happen. And I got to be honest, sometimes we just need a lot and lot and lot of practice. And sometimes we may not necessarily want to do it. We want to stay in bed and hope the noise will just go away. We know that some days will be better than others when it comes to praising God. Sometimes the song will have a bright and catchy melody backed by wonderful harmonies. Other times it will seem off-key and impossible to achieve, as if all we can muster are the wrong notes, loud horns, screeching tires. But we are still called to practice and praise, to listen and respond and to do. Because through grace, there are those moments when we are working with God and the right sound is unleashed on creation and love is felt and made known. And in those moments, all that practice truly is worth it and worthy of praise. We are called to work in concert with God, in community, with each other, in all of our spaces, and regardless of age. And so, rather than allow all the discordant noises that don't seem to make any sense in our world get the better of us, we do need to sometimes pause amidst the chaotic discourse of dissonance and listen for God so we can re-engage as creative partners with God. Worship is a space for that to happen, an intentional setting apart and setting aside to reconnect with God. And this morning... We're going to take a moment to pause and listen as two musicians work together. So I invite Elizabeth Ford, I invite Deck Young to get ready. They're going to use their talent to produce something beautiful as an offering and reminder of what it means to tap into our creative impulses in partnership with God. And so let's pause and let's listen to this beautiful Brahms sonata.
Amen, and thank you. That is such a blessing. You know, this week I had uh, the opportunity for a sneak peek as Elizabeth and Deck Young were in here practicing. And, you know, I just kind of sat over there quiet, and they were discussing the nuances of certain notes of let's look at a measure or two, and let's try this, and let's do that. And it was just a beautiful reminder of how in partnership they were working to, together to create something impactful. Much was happening in the practice, knowing that even if mistakes happened, growth would occur, and the presentation in the moment would be a faithful reflection of their offering praise to God. Now, for those few moments of us listening, I know that we too were all participants in this piece, open to the movement of the music and ready to show our gratitude, even if some of us in this moment are weighed down by what is happening beyond this space. But we are still partners together and partners with God, ready to live out of our beloved community, moving from note to note, beat to beat. You know, I was reminded one time, um, after a particularly disastrous solo in the middle of a band concert in high school, um, I came up to the band, I was like, man, I really just missed a lot of notes. And the band director said, but the notes you hit were great. <laughs> and sometimes that is how church is. We are co-creators in the work we are doing, relying on grace and Christ's love to ensuring that we are a place of welcome and affirmation. And sometimes we may miss a note here or there, but we will continue to practice together in order to better praise God and one another. Now, Psalm 150, again, as I mentioned, is the last psalm. Its placement, though, is no accident. If you sing the psalms from front to back, you get the whole range of the human experience with God, an experience that not only names our love for God, but some of those psalms really does name our disappointments and our discouragements and the truth of doubt and despair that we sometimes feel. One of the things, you know, listening to this piece, there was so much beauty and so much excitement happening, but I also know, you know, there are times when I was beginning to um, experience kind of the depth and full range of emotion, as any good classical piece allows you to do. And that's what the psalm does. Note to note, we tried to build something beautiful, but we recognize that right now, culturally, perhaps there are folks that don't want us to fully live in and live out these praise and thanksgiving to God. I did this this morning. I'll do it again. Again, I'm going off script here, folks, so you just have to bear with me. I'm going to get a little political. I was thinking how right now, for instance, out of the Kansas State Legislature, We've enacted policies that said, you know what, some people don't get to sing notes. Some people's notes aren't worthy to be heard, and we're going to do everything in our power to erase them, to not acknowledge them. To say if you self-identify as transgender, we don't want to hear your notes. Now, is that praising God? Of course not. In other sectors, if we say we hear too many notes of gunfire being shot, what happens is like, ah, that's just the way life is when we live out of a place of freedom. I'm like, okay. I guess those are notes that we're ready to listen to despite the notes of those who are gasping their last breath. There are, you know, we're going to, this summer we're going to have a band book club, and I'm looking forward to it. Because there are people that want to say, you know what, these are notes that maybe we shouldn't be reading, embracing, embodying. And all of this to say that part of this discourse of who we are as people of God, when we say, you know, we will praise God but place limits on that praise, that we won't allow some of these notes even into our sacred spaces, 
I don't know if we are fully living out of our calling to creating this beautiful symphony and this beautiful music that we've just heard. And so I wrestle and I struggle with how are we creating this special praise to God that the psalmist calls to do. But as we try to put all these notes together, the work of the church really can sometimes be exhausting. How many of you get exhausted sometimes with church? It's okay to admit, yes, we do. Yeah, <laughs> brave fellow down here. <laughs> but even in the midst of this exhaustion, there are moments when the work of the church can be totally exhilarating when we respond in love to God's grace and we can faithfully praise God in ways that demonstrates the fullness of what Christ did in our lives and in our hearts. And so we are called to not be discouraged that even in the midst, again, this psalm coming at the end of Psalms says, you know what, you all have been through a lot, but we can still praise God. This is the season of Easter where we recognize the truth and beauty of the empty two that says, death will not be what prevails, but new life in Christ. God's justice, God's path of love is the song that we will be singing from the empty tomb. And that is a blessing. Each and every one of us have notes that we can offer. And it won't create this horrible sound, but rather beautiful music that is in response to God's grace. And I find that exhilarating. So in those moments when I wake up and those birds are like, oh my gosh, will you just please stop? I am reminded that this is creation calling me back into God's grace. And this psalm, this psalm of praise, is a way for us to recognize that through it all, we can offer our praise and thanksgiving to God. This psalm is often read during this time of year in this season of Easter because it is re a response to what Christ has done and it is a response to what the Spirit continues to do in our lives and our hearts. This is the soundtrack for after Easter as we come to realize that the empty tomb was not an empty promise but a declaration that we are all beloved children of God ready to live in a new way after Easter. Not afraid of the sometimes messy notes, and there's going to be a lot of messy notes, but empowered to trusting fully in Christ's work in the world, where every day is a beautiful day. And all of us, as beloved children of God, powerfully and wonderfully made, are integral to that soundtrack. Amen. Let us pray. Holy God, we are blessed with this gift of music, with this opportunity to give ourselves over to you as an offering through our praise and thanksgiving. We are blessed by all these beautiful notes that are ready to sing your praise so that we can be empowered to go into the world to proclaim the goodness of your love. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Well, offering is our response to God's grace. It is our response to doing the work in the world through the mission and ministry of Asbury United Methodist Church. And it truly is through your prayers, your presence, through your gifts, through your service, and your witness that we offer ourselves fully in praise and thanksgiving to God. The ushers will come forward at this time so that we can receive the offering. Lord with gladness, come before. 
In our songs and in our words, we give praise to you, Lord. With all that we are and with all that we have, we offer you our thanks and praise, Lord. Amen. Let us sing together our closing hymn, When in our music God is glorified.
friends, may we go from this place refreshed and renewed in the Spirit, ready to sing praises to God in the week and weeks ahead. Go now in peace. Amen.